Keep going, Frank. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I was, I, you know, I was just very moved by, by what um, uh, Kirsten was, was saying on the, um, uh, you know, on the fires and the whole thing. And, I, you know, I could see her get emotional. And, and um, you know, I went through the same thing just before coming, um, coming to the retreat in February in, um, in California when I came to Mexico. But, you know, the, the, the uh, just, you know, joining, it was like almost I was joining with her, you know, as she was talking and I could feel the feeling, you know, and I could feel tears. And, you know, I've been out now uh, in the world again for uh, a few weeks. And for me, it's been, you know, I feel I, I lost touch a bit uh, because, you know, the, the life has been catching up with me. I mean, not with me, I... I I just uh, started to get overwhelmed again, and um, and I forgot about you know what I learned in community to to just use whatever is going on as a backdrop and to not um, you know uh, 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 you know and, and to not make the result uh, um, uh, the, the priority. And I, and uh, uh, two days ago, I really I caved in under the pressure, you know, and I just can you give me the volume control. Oh, I can see Jeffrey now. Yes, I'm back, Frank. Okay, now, yeah, we just <laughs> we just joined on the phone. It's yeah, just so sad. <laughs> I've been joining for a while, and then it really caught up with me, you know. And and it's more difficult being out here um, because there's so many things that. Um, that go on, you know, uh, and 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 not having the support there all the time to, um, you know, to 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 really express and be transparent with what's going on, and, and I let let events uh, um, actually just take um, take over again, and and um, and so. Uh, yeah, there, there was, I, I felt so much pressure from that, and, um, and it was hard. So, so you know, to go back to the 12th step, that is why we asked and, and we asked to, um, uh, you know, to join. And you, you see, see it so, so much that people come in and they join all the time, and then, and then they go back into life, and then they start getting jobs, and they start having, you know, a, a life back, what they call, and then suddenly they're twice removed from God again. And um, I mean, just a long way to explain. Yeah, I, I wasn't mind watching enough to see. Okay, you know, what are you do? What is your purpose? You know, I lost my purpose. You certainly did, Frank. I did. <laughs> I <guess. laughs> yeah, we just had a call, and it was great. I hadn't spoken to Frank in. Yeah, probably a week since uh, since we had last spoken, and it's funny after that watching that with uh, with Kirsten. I had heard some of those miracles before, and it's like that idea of no canyon hopping. It's all the same. It's all this mind training, and you know Frank's talking about when he we spoke today. He started sharing about his fire, his wildfires, what was going on, you know, in France, and you know the only thing I heard was sponsorship, you know, and anytime I would have someone in the program. Anytime there was a problem, it's always, well, where are you at? What step are you on? What, you know, are you talking to your sponsor? And when you find a sponsor, it's like, does your sponsor have a sponsor? You know, and me and Frank got into this discussion and it's like, that is the benefit of having mighty companions that you can talk to every day. Right now, you know, two weeks ago when we, when we had our show, after the show, I wrote down practice. Like, that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about practice because in the 12th step, you know, this is the last step, but and the 12th step, it's actually having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps. After I've done all the work and I've experienced some kind of connection with God, I continued to carry the message and practice these principles in all my affairs. So what am I doing each day to practice? And that's what I brought up with Frank. I'm like, well, Frank, you haven't called me. You know, when he had left, we had connected probably every day for the beginning. And this happens in 12-step programs all the time. And what happens to them, they go back out and they die or they get drunk and they get in an accident or something and they're forced back in. Frank has an addiction to the world. So he's out there in France with the World Cup and people honking horns and 
you know, we shared, he loves it there, you know, but there's something else. There's something else missing. When, when you first left, you had said, this is great. He went to Zurich first when you were in, on our last show and you know, it was, oh man, I don't really like it here because you know, you were, you're were actually attending some meetings, but you were going home and watching movies and you were saying, but I just feel this emptiness. You know, there was this, there was this part that you were trying to get back to. And without that constant connection with someone, it gets lost quickly, you know, and you can't fill it with anyway, anything, a bunch of movies. You said you started becoming addicted to movies and watching them over and over. And that would fit, that won't fill the hole any different than anything else. You know, there's always a purpose behind what we're doing, but with this idea of practice, when I first started the program and, you know, initially I was going to read some things out of here because there's pages that actually speak right to this in the big book that I read in the 12 steps and it's 84 through 88. And it says, when we retire at night and it specifically says, and we just, and this is mind watching, you know, and this is, they talk about at the end of the day to look back, where was I selfish? Where was I dishonest? Where was I not packing into the stream of lives? The things that I wanted to do or to be helpful to others. And what I do, what I did with my sponsor, what I did with other people, sponsees, I would have them call me every night and we would just connect at night and they would just call and I'd just say, we'd go through the questions and just answer them like, oh, you know what? I did this. And that's clearing my mind before I can go to sleep. And then I'd wake up and there's another section at the bottom of the page in the morning for the 24 hours ahead. I consider my plans for the day. I still do those things religiously. You know, we say we don't have rituals. I still have actually a few rituals. I wake up very early and I do these things and then I combine them with the, the course. I read setting the goal every morning. I read certain sections of it, but I remember it because I have to set the goal. And then I reread responsibility for sight. And then I read rules for decisions and I go through them in my mind every morning so that I can actually, there's this guy that I used to watch on online. He said, you win the first hour of the day, you win the day. It's like, if I wake up and I get out of bed and I don't have that right state of mind, I have to do it right now. My sponsor's Jason and you'll be hearing from him next since we've come here. And even before we left, I would sit with him outside I would meditate every night and morning. And he would come join me and every night sit for a half hour to an hour. Every morning we're meeting outside at six o'clock so I can see what's going on. I had a little stuff left over from yesterday. So first thing this morning, I can get that stuff out and say, Hey, this is what I held on to, or this is where I think I compromised or whatever it is. So I can get, cause I can't see the things this is in recovery. What sponsorship is. I can't see my own defenses and blocks. I can't see them well enough. They're so well hidden that I can't possibly see them. I've been practicing this forever, you know, hiding things or, taking pressure when pressure Jason can see when I'm have a lot of pressure and I'm hiding it or whatever. And he can say, Hey, maybe it's to do this or whatever. And I can actually let these things go. It's funny and a testament to those that Kirsten was just talking about, like, and you being back in France now, Switzerland and France and not being in this environment where you're practicing it every day. It happens quick. It's like you're saying someone that steps out of the program or this connection, the mind takes off. It's like, and having these guys and hearing the miracles about the fire and just being like the testament to that presence, like is unbelievable. Like Nicholas just came in here and you must have seen the, when Kirsten was out here, the, the camera was blurry in and out. This is the first time we're in a transition. I just moved up here and, you know, left the studio back home. We were trying different things and the lighting was making her blurry. Well, it could have been the lighting. It could be that she's so close to Ascension that she's phasing out once in a while. But he came in, he's like, oh, way to, you know, way to keep cool. And it's not even me keeping cool. It's only the fact that I spend a lot of time like disregarding those thoughts or, you know, a lot of thoughts coming at me. It's like, okay, no, what would you have me do? No, don't touch the camera now. Kirsten's in the flow. I'm not going to even attempt to try to like operate everything while that stuff is coming out because if I can feel it. You know, you guys could hear the audio. It wasn't a matter if she was blurry or not, but it's like everything that we do ends up in the moment. We practice these things. And it started with me with those pages and the 12 steps. And it's that connection with a person. So you started off by saying, I don't have that support. You have me, you know, we were talking about this today. It was like, you know, I was talking with Lisa every day and then, you know, Lisa has a lot going on in Mexico right now or whatever the case may be. And you're like, and I'm like, you have me like, and whenever there is a need to talk or, you know, I sent you an email the other day. It's like, this is what's given. Now we have some things that were coming up that we're going to be able to connect on with this new studio. And, yeah, we're actually looking to put a bigger studio, rent a Camus, uh, a theater here in Camus so that we can actually not have these blurry scenes or <laughs> camera switching issues anymore. And it's like, this is what's given right now for us to join on these things. And it's like, we have such a benefit too of bending through the 12 steps. And we know, we know that, that 
actually, oh, I don't have anyone to join. Is that in the program we say the 5,000 pound phone? We don't want to pick up the phone a lot of times because we actually want to stay in this victimhood. We want to stay in this, you know what, there is a wildfire, my house may burn down or whatever the issues are going on with you. It's like, we actually, there's a comfort in it. And until we actually join with someone else, the other day I had a bunch of stuff going on and I went down to Jason's at night and I had this head cold. Like we went to San Francisco and we came here and it was like, the pressure was overwhelming. And I just went in and I just, the first question I asked him, I said, dude, I don't, I don't know what's going on. What do you think's going on? And he just talked for minutes and it was like, just even the little things he said. And then he shared something about Emily or Kirsten or something. And as he talked the, I could feel the pressure in my head, just completely relieved. I was like, oh. it was like just this willingness to see it from a different perspective. That's all I'm trying to do. And when I join with someone else, that's what I'm doing. When I say, Hey, tell me what you think is going on with me. That's actually the transparency and the willingness to see it differently. And that's just the practice that we have. And that's what I'm here for, Frank. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really appreciate that. And I, you know, one of the things, and I say this often, I see that, uh, you know, the gifts that the, the, uh, in, the, in the course is that I, I see uh, through the course how much resistance there is. And that's, that's a great thing because when that resistance comes up, I, I know what, it's part of the process, you know, to, to go, go to the light. The ego doesn't want to go to the light. And when you say uh, that thousand uh, pound phone, uh, that's, that's what that is. But, you know, there was also so many things because, you know, now um, I'm, I'm going back into the world I used to live in and, and, and my world. And, and I've been asking for changes and these changes are coming now. You know, they, they're, they're, we talked about it. There's a lot of changes. I mean, uh, it's stuff I didn't expect. And uh, it seemed very scary. And then, then we talked and, and uh, you said, but that's a blessing. And uh, I, you know, I asked for you know, I asked to let go. To, I, I asked for the escape hatch, you know, that the, that the, uh, the course offers and, and to leave the world in that sense. And now this is happening. So things seem to be uh, removed, but they're not really removed. It's just, it's just shifting, but the, the ego sees it as... Um, as being taken away, you know, and um, and so I, you know, I just need to to be reminded this is this is not at all being taken away, and I've always asked, this is my call. My call has been, you know, to my call has been for thirty plus years to end up with the course with you guys, and now it's happening. And sometimes it feels like, ooh, this is really like even you know the fires or the fires in, in uh, near the monastery this is always frank it's always this idea of actually what we talked about i think it was two weeks ago in that section the problem and the answer is it says nothing can be more specific than to be told that what we ask for we will be given it's like everything even the things we talked about with we don't have to get into them here but those things are actually what I'm asking for. Like each time that I forget that, then the ego interpretation comes in and that's, I need to join with someone else. So you guys say, Frank, what do you think of this? And you can tell me what it actually is. So I can't take that interpretation. It's like, I tell this to Susanna once in a while. I'm like, freedom is just the realization that everything is an answer to my prayer. If I could just keep that at the forefront of my mind, it's like, you know, that and the third step, you know, I can actually let go. And this was yesterday, I think, uh, I bookmarked this, this one paragraph and I mean, I've been doing the lessons where Jason is in the lessons and uh, 194 was I place the future in the hands of God. And it's like, is that not step three? I mean, that's actually what it is. You know, I will let go of my will. And the one little paragraph that was like, just blew me away. was like, if you can see the lesson for today, 
if I can remember, I place the future in the hand of God as the deliverance. It really is. You will not hesitate to give as much consistent effort as you can to make it be part of you as it becomes a thought that rules your mind, a habit in your problem solving repertoire, a way of quick re reaction to temptation. You extend your learning to the world and you learn to see salvation in all things. So the world perceive that is saved. It's like, when I can actually see that everything is my salvation. That's what a reminder is to me. Like every time I actually see something that I have this resistance to, I'm like, wait, this is my salvation. I share this one all the time. Susanna called me once I'm at the temple and I'm running up to others. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm carrying bags of dirt. Like it's my salvation because it is. It's like whatever's actually being given in the moment is like, and this idea of like, just bringing that idea to the forefront of my mind, like, I can place the future in the hand, the place my future in the hands of God with the things we were talking about, finances and all this stuff. So much is held on to that identity. Certainly mean you were very big, built around those things. And it's like, if I can actually do that on a consistent basis, continue to hand that over. Because what's the next thing? If I can make it a rule of my mind, a habit in my problem solving repertoire, as a, well, not what our mind is, it's trying to solve all these problems that are non-existent. This is all we talked about this morning, the problems with the certain things that you talked about, you know, but it's like, this is all I'm doing with mind training is remembering this one thing, you know, over and over every lesson to me, is like the same, just written differently. And it's like, yeah, it's been, it's been pretty profound. So I wanted to actually share that paragraph with you. Yeah. I always, you know, uh, I mean, the, the, the uh, for me to get into this platform and in, you know, once I'm connected, I I know. I mean, there's that that knowing that that this is it's just part of it. you know this is just the script. But in order to get um, into you know to to be in the connection, I I have to be transparent. And I have to be um, really in the awareness of what's what's going on, and I and I think for me that's what's difficult, being you know in the world where where it doesn't really um, you know it's not so conducive to to expose all the time, and and, and then before I know it, I'm wrapped up with a task or with a goal and I forgot to, you know, to, to really feel my purpose. I don't know if, if that, that makes uh, a sense. And then, then so, so that's, that's been such a important part of my process um, since I've been, you know, with you guys is that, that, that transparency and the, the method to do it and using uh, a function as, as a backdrop. It's just all it is is a backdrop, you know, and now function becomes again the main goal. And, and that's where, um, you know, if I don't stay connected, I can very easily just lose that and, 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 and take the, the, the wrong turn. And I think that's what happened on the other night. You know, there was just all these things I had to deal with and then my girlfriend was talking about something else. I thought, I thought you know, I just can't handle all this. You know, it, it was, was um, a, like a pressure. It was like a pressure cooker. And then, um, you know, and then the next day, they just exposed and, and we cried together. And it was like, it was like, like opening a valve and, you know, letting it all, all go. So, so what I'm trying to say is all this, you know, getting in touch uh, is very important. Um, yeah, you actually, you actually said that. You said uh, this morning when we talked, you said that when you were here, when we were in Mexico together, you said you were so in touch with your emotions. And like until what you just talked about and what you shared with me, until you actually cried the other day, you hadn't since since you had left. And it's like... Yeah, I remember like being in my first stages of recovery and like crying so often. And it's like, that's the key is actually being in touch with, with what we do feel. And 
Yeah, I keep, I, I think I have an assignment for you, Frank. So I'm going to say it here on the show. So this is going to be like a sponsorship assignment. And uh, you're going to be reading Setting the Goal section every morning like I do for the next 30 days. So I just wanted to make it clear. So then in two weeks when we have our show, we'll check back in and see if you've been keeping up with your assignment. <laughs> <laughs> so we are witnesses. Yes, God yes. Full transparency here on last step. Yeah. So, so what are you, are you talking about? Uh, the the the, 80, the page is eighty four to eighty eight. No, no, that's in a big book. I want you to read setting the goal out of the course. That's chapter oh, seventeen. Okay. It's in chapter seventeen, yeah. but it's like. It's, it's the same thing like a few weeks ago, or it was probably a month ago now, Francis was join, joining uh, Susan on the show and talking about time and how to reverse time. That's actually how you do it. Setting the goal, it reverses cause and effect that anything, if we put the goal in advance, it's the same thing as it's the rest of the stuff in the book, but I read it over and over again. It's the same as the rules for decision. In the rules for decision, it actually says, what day do you want? Like That's how it starts. Before I make any decision, this is step three. I have to turn over the decision maker. I will make no decisions myself today. So if I can do that consistently, then I can be in a consistent state of peace. It's when I start making my own decisions and not joining with others, sponsorship, Jason, whoever it is, that's where things come in. The other day I made a decision and bought something like quickly, like, because I thought there was responsibility. All these things come in. It was like, I had to go join with you. I'm like, I can't believe I did this. And it was like, because so many things come into the mind where and it's so quick to see that, oh, I did this thinking I'd be helpful or whatever it was. But it's ridden with guilt. When I make the decision myself, there's no choice. There's no choice about it. It's like it automatically comes in. And that, and that rules for decision, which, uh, again, is like my that same time that uh, Marie asked. That would be my section. If you told, asked me what section of the book was my section, it's like it tells you there. If you follow these rules, these simple rules, you can be out of pain and suffering in peace. It's like, so why wouldn't I put all my, that consistent effort I just talked about, why wouldn't I put all my effort towards it? It's like, so what do I do? And it's, what do I do? Stop, pause when you have a moment for reflection and think of the day you want. Okay, the feelings I would choose to have, this is responsibility for sight. I choose the feelings I experience. And then the day I would have, it's like setting the goal. I'm getting a five minute mark. And then the, the experiences I would choose to have when I was back in Mexico, uh, Kristen was living with us for a time and she was writing them down every morning. And then me and Emily, we started doing it again. I used to write them down every morning as a practice and then starting to do it over and over. And it works. Like you should have heard like, oh, I prayed to have an experience during a movie and boom, like I experienced on the show, like it happens over and over. This is the, the simple Thing that if we ask we will receive the thing is I'm afraid to ask because I'm afraid that something will happen that I don't want to so yeah don't be afraid to ask Frank yeah thank you I you know it's and, and also not you know not get too busy you know, not get too busy to do these things and then and I, I, it's very clear how the ego you know, say okay I gotta do my lesson it wants to say okay but do this but do this first, and you know, take care of this. And this is, you know, this I, I, I suppose is is the fear of the light, and um, and and uh, and again, I think that's such a great uh, a tool to know. You know, don't listen to that. That is your. That is what's going to keep you from the light. You know, why why are we? So, so resistant, and, and it's, it's very clear. And um, even, you know, when you said, okay, I have this assignment, and you, you know, there was a voice that said, hey, well, you don't have time. <laughs> I have nothing but time here, you know? And so, um, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's very, uh, um, yeah, it's just, it, it, it's just cunning, baffling, and powerful, like yeah. it says in the book, you know? And, and so... Well, I'm very grateful to, to well, everything you just said. And yeah. They moved by our, our relationship. Yeah, it's been, it's been a blessing since the day you walked through the door and showed up at a Wednesday gathering 
in La Casa. It's funny. It's like my friend John from back east. There's certain ones as soon as they walk in a room, you're like, hope there's something, there's something here. I'm connected with this guy or girl or whatever it is. And it's like, and since then it has been a testament to that. It's like so many things, even what we talked about, I had so much emotion after we had our call during the two or three days ago and talking about these seeming issues that are coming up for you. And it's like, I've taken some of those steps and like knowing the release and it was hard going through them because our identity is so tied up in it. And it's like, to think that that can be used, it's like the same as recovery. It's the same as recovery. It's like, no, I've been through these things. You don't have to do that. Or this is how it worked. It's like, they always say in recovery, any problem you have, someone in the room has had it, you know? And it's like, any problem you think you've had, any person in community has had it or went through it. It's like the same thing. It's like such a strong, strong bond. So yeah, I'm grateful for that. And yeah, don't try to party too much since you guys won the World Cup over there. You're in the south of France, so it should be pretty, pretty fun. I didn't even know there was a World Cup. <laughs> yeah. We're on the phone earlier, and Frank's like, all the, horn, all the boats are honking and people are making noise. And like, yeah, I think that. By that time, I knew. Uh, I didn't even know. <laughs> yeah, and they won. I checked. They won. So it'll be a happy time in France. I can tell by the noises. <laughs> Uh, that's great. All right, so we're about out of time. We're going to try to get set up here and uh, get ready okay. for Jay and David. But uh, in two weeks, um, we have strawberry coming up, so I think oh, ours comes there. So we'll see when when we're back on live to uh, check in about your assignment and everything. So that'll be great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, and I'll talk to you later today or tomorrow. <laughs> we will. All right. Okay. I love you, Frank. Thank you. I love you. Bye, everyone else. <laughs> Patrick, John and Deb, Rich.